welcome to this session on uh, creating data APIs with uh, W2 Data Integration Server. Um, so basically, in this session, I'll be going through um, so what are the plans we have for the data integration server, so what we are going to do with, what you can do with the server, and uh, basically uh, how it relates to the current W2 Data Services server and so on. So starting off. So uh, data, as you know, is the most valuable asset you have. So, so starting from there, the main thing is, OK, how to access the data and uh, manage the data properly. So, so that's what you have to start thinking uh, when you have the data in your organization. So um, when you call, uh, then the next step is when you uh, talk about data, there's a lot of diversity among, among data. So may it be structured, semi-structured, and so on. So there are a lot of di different kinds of data in different data sources. So, uh, so the first thing is to okay, how to get to that data. So, uh, so that's the next challenge you will have. So, um, so the requirement is basically, uh, uh, first of all, accessing the data. So you will have to access, get the data to yourself, and uh, basically explore the data. And then uh, you basically do something with the data. So you will probably clean the data, like do some transformations and so on, like fix the data if you may. So then after that, uh, you may again want to store it somewhere. So, uh, so those are the typical things you would do with the current data you have. And uh, so after that, so then you have the data in the format you want, the representation you want. Then uh, basically you will create some data APIs to be accessed by your applications. So you need basically like a data access layer uh, in your system uh, for applications to easily access that data. So uh, that's basically the requirement like most of you may have. So, uh, so the, what's the current solution we have? So at the moment, uh, we have uh, uh, the product, the WC2 data service server and the ESB. Uh, usually we uh, work, uh, we make scenarios using both of these uh, products. So like uh, data services service usually uh, used to, uh, like straight, to do straightforward CRUD operations most of the time. Like if you want to access some data from somewhere, you will put a data services server, create service, and access that. So that's the main thing that it does. So access and so do some, uh, it has some small features, but the main thing is uh, accessing and uh, basically manipulating data in a straightforward manner. And uh, then you have uh, the ESB to do some additional uh, uh, data operations, like if you want to do some data orchestration, so basically on the, uh, using the services, the data services, uh, using its service orchestration capability, you will uh, uh, do your, so basically create your complex scenarios, so the, the data orchestration. So basically that's where you will create the, basically the outside APIs to the user. So if you have a complex scenario, either, uh, so basically with using the ESB, you can create those. And uh, that's the, then after that, that's where the consumer app will come and connect to that to access that data as APIs. So, uh, uh, so this solution works properly now, uh, so, but uh, there are some moving parts involved, like additional ones, like the introduction of the ESB and so on. So what we plan is, so with the data integration server, so we, we basically combine most of the functionality in these two together. So in that, so in the data integration server, we'll have the full data access transform and the data orchestration capabilities built into the data integration server. So it will have its own, uh, basically like a, 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 a data flow language, uh, which you can use to man uh, access different data uh, stores, do transactions and so on easily. So it's like a one-stop shop for all your data orchestration needs. And from that directly, you can create the data APIs. So this, uh, that's the approach we are basically moving towards. So from that, so then directly from there, we can create the data API, and the data, the, the, the API consumer, the application can directly access that. So it becomes a single source, uh, uh, specifically a uh, uh, dedicated place to do your all data operations. So, um, 
for some of you who may not know about Data Service Server itself, so I'll go through some of the main features of Data Service Server, because Data Integration Service is basically an extension of that. And I'll come to that, how we are extending that for to come, uh, to come to Data Integration Server. So Data Service Server, so of course it's all full open source and based on standards, so we use SOAP, REST, and so on. And uh, basically it encapsulates the data access and the manipulation logic there, so we have a nice uh, declarative language for defining that. So uh, without any programming knowledge and so on, you can very easily create services, data services. And uh, of course what it entails is uh, we can do like, we, we, we have loose coupling between the data and the application logic because we have the data services separately and your application uh, logic uh, separately. And so the main part of achieving that is the data service description language. So as I mentioned, this is, this is the XML-based declarative language we have now, uh, which, uh, which is a very straightforward uh, language which uh, basically maps like uh, data, so data sources, data services queries, and the operations and the resources. So uh, with that, we can uh, very easily create the data services using this uh, language. <coughs> so some of the main points of uh, the data service, like what we support. So obviously, we support like multiple data sources. Uh, like and you can see some of them, like relational databases, NoSQL databases, like RDBM, uh, Cassandra, Mongo, spreadsheet types, and so on. So. Um, we support a, a wide array of inbuilt data connectors. And of course, also, you can create your own custom data source as well. And uh, so basically, with the availability of multiple data sources, so we have this way to basically federate the data using these uh, nested queries. So in a single request, you can basically uh, mix and match different uh, data from different data sources and create a single response. So that type of uh, functionality is there when you are defining a data service. And um, we have natively support for XML and JSON uh, results mapping. So in the, in the declarative uh, language, so we have support for when uh, the result section is defined, we can give like XML and JSON templates and say this is the way uh, the response should be. So we can basically map the result set of the, uh, the, the query result to the uh, response format we need. <clears throat> and also we have like uh, batching support. So like uh, when you are doing data service requests, like uh, especially for performance reasons, since these are uh, remote service calls, uh, we have to do as, as, as much as possible in a single request. So uh, data batching is important. So especially when you are doing bulk operation, like adding a lot of user entries or anything like that, uh, at once you should uh, batch it from the client side and send batches to the server. So that kind of support is also uh, uh, we have in the data service server. Uh, in two modes, we call it box carding and like client side batching. So uh, client side batching is same type of operations uh, uh, batched together. And box carding is in the client side, we batch different types of operation and send to the backend. Uh, to be executed in a single transaction in the uh, backend data store. So uh, that support is there already in the data services server. And uh, also with the same thing, um, with the batches and uh, batch processing and so on. So we have distributed transaction support. So in the data services, so if the data source support a distributed transaction, like in RDBMS, if you have the XA data sources defined, uh, we support distributed transactions as well. So we have inbuilt uh, transaction manager that ships with the server. And from that, uh, we can do distributed transaction uh, with batch processing or with, uh, for example, if it couple it with ESB, we can do JMS plus data service. We can make that whole uh, global transaction with the distributed transaction support. <coughs> And also we have uh, uh, REST support as well. So we have first class SOAP and REST support. So when you are do, uh, defining a data service, an API, uh, you can basically map the queries to uh, resources as well. So you can give the HTTP, uh, HTTP verbs, the, the query paths, and so on, and create uh, RESTful uh, uh, services as well. 
And uh, we have, uh, we also, uh, like recently in the last release, uh, uh, brought uh, support for OData. So OData, uh, so we support the OData v4 uh, spec. Uh, with that, basically in our data services, so we st start by uh, defining a data source. So uh, these data sources, so we provided the functional to directly expose those data sources as OData, uh, basically as OData. So the, the standard resources and the, the endpoints will be exposed automatically by the server. So then we don't have to go and create the queries, the resources, operations, and so on. They, those will be automatically uh, added to the uh, service. So with that, so you can easily create the data source, just stick in the enable all data, that's it. So from that, uh, using the standard all data endpoints, you can directly access the data uh, with the queries given there. <coughs> so also we have other QoS features like uh, data security. So we have inbuilt support for uh, full W security standards. So um, with that, we can uh, enable data security scenarios as well. And of course, other scenarios like auth and so on can be done by interfacing with the API manager for creating managed APIs. So that is support, supported as well. And also, as I mentioned earlier, data federation. So uh, by using, since we have the multiple data source access and so on, we can uh, access multiple data source together and create a single result out of that in supporting, uh, creating some, uh, uh, some, some data federation scenarios. And also we have um, tra data transformation uh, features, uh, although somewhat limited uh, feature uh, there. Uh, so uh, we support uh, XSLT transformation in data service. So if you have a specific XSLT, you can bind it to the uh, data service uh, responses and do the transformation as you need. So that is all supported. Uh, so now you have a rough idea on how data services work, which we have currently. Uh, let's talk about, okay, what's coming with data integration server, so which we are working on now. So uh, data integration service, basically, current WSO DSS features plus uh, other data orchestration uh, features. So basically, uh, with that, what we do is uh, add the ability to work on, uh, like, uh, do, uh, uh, like, add logic to access multiple data sources and do some uh, conditional logic there. So if you want to uh, like uh, get data from multiple da uh, data sources, check some fields, do some cleaning of that data, put to another data source, and so on. So that kind of function is added with uh, uh, the data orchestration features, which is coming with DIS. And also uh, much more complex uh, transaction scenarios. So currently it's limited to uh, batch processors and the interface and uh, interfacing with the ESB, but we need to have much more uh, complex transaction processing where we can uh, define custom define the transaction boundaries and uh, control the transaction uh, 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 in a more proper way. So uh, with this, we are also improving that aspect as well. And also another one of the critical thing is so. With this approach, we are doing the data auction there itself, so we are accessing the databases, data sources from that server itself. So uh, it removes the additional service calls that are needed for the current scenario. So for example, currently, if you are using the ESB, so we have to do multiple service calls uh, to the data service server to do multiple actions. So but here, the idea is we'll be doing the, uh, the, the data calls directly from the DI service itself. So from there, we'll be directly accessing the data uh, databases, data sources, and getting the data and doing the logic there and returning. So we are totally delegating all the data actions to that part itself without doing multiple uh, 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 resource call, the resource uh, basically service calls with the with another entity. So that will hugely make the uh, the creating the data access and the manipulation logic simpler and performance will be uh, much higher. And as I mentioned, so uh, less moving parts, less deployment uh, complexity, and uh, you get uh, like more overall architectural simplicity with this because you delegate the whole thing to DIS 
and you can uh, control the other aspects with the other parts of the architecture. <coughs> So, uh, so something new that comes with the uh, BIS is the WS2 integration server uh, language. So that's the uh, core integration uh, language for all our WS2 integration products. So we are now rolling out, like we are working on uh, the new WS2 integration server, the identity bus, WS2 DIS, and so on. So all of these will be based on the new uh, uh, WS2 integration server language. So with that, so basically it's a, uh, it's a language, a graphical language based on a sequence diagram model, so which is uh, very easy to understand at a glance when you uh, have the thing. So the data flows and the actors uh, and so on can be easily identified there. So we are, we are basically working on that model at the moment. Uh, and also with that, also we are working on a common object model for representing the data flow. Uh, that is basically, uh, so when we can have uh, different types of data types and protocols sending requests to the server, service, XML, JSON, through HTTP, JMS, and so on. But we have to, internally, the logic should be independent of those uh, uh, data types, so the, all the uh, transport and the formats. So for that, we are, uh, work, uh, working on a, uh, a transformation for uh, to the common object model based on our data mapper tool. So with that, so basically uh, we can do the conversion from input to output using the data mapper. So yeah. So we'll uh, go to some DIS language samples so you will get a, a better understanding of how this will work. So this is a simple uh, like relational database uh, uh, data, uh, data lookup. So what you will simply uh, do in a simple data service. So um, this is a new language, the graphical language we have. So there we'll um, have the inbound endpoints, the pipeline which will have the logic which will execute uh, the flow of the uh, service call. So for each service call, we'll have a separate uh, flow like this. And the data sources will be there as uh, separate uh, lifelines, basically. So there we give the query to the data source, saying, oh, this is what you have to ex execute. And it will return back the response as the response with the response variables. Then you can do like logging and other things there. And basically, after that, you will send out the response with, uh, back to the uh, inbound endpoint. So that's a very simple way of. So, so uh, modeling the, uh, the, 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 the query there. And if you look at the actual code that is generated, so, so it's also a very simple, um, easy to understand uh, syntax we have. So if someone wants, they can directly go to the uh, source and uh, edit that as well. Uh, so there you have the, like, the uh, inbound endpoints and the same structures that are there in the uh, the, 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 the visual model is represented here, so you can easily change the things and do some customization here directly. <clears throat> so another example with transactions. So, uh, so we basically uh, scope the thing with a new transaction uh, box here, so which will say all the operations here will run in a single transaction. So, if, uh, so only after all the Queries are executed, it will be committed, or else it will basically be rolled back. So that is uh, defined there with this construct uh, graphically. So that's also in the, uh, the, the, the language you represent like this. I'm sorry, I guess you can't see it in detail here. Uh, so again, so other, other complicated scenarios, like we have to put loops, if else conditions, and so on, will be again done in the same way, so you can see like we have some nested loops here, and uh, doing, uh, first we are doing a data lookup, get that data, again loop that and insert into another one, and so on. So that is done in a, uh, with, with loops, and again, everything is scoped in a single transaction. So you clearly mark the transaction boundaries there, and do the operations. And at the end, you just, again, query some data and send it back. So this top and the bottom part will be, uh, 
improve to have the data mapper to do the transformation. But uh, the, currently, this is the model we have. So same way, when you have multiple data sources, it's a matter of uh, doing adding a multi, uh, another lifeline there with the, uh, which represents the uh, data source. And you just do multiple calls to that and get the data and probably return something to, uh, with that. So, uh, so with that, it's very easy to understand what's happening uh, at a glance. Again, the code. So this is the data mapper we have now, which we, we are going to integrate with the uh, DIS. So based on our Eclipse tooling, so this, this will be used to basically uh, uh, convert from the input to the common object, object model that's there in the model, and then again to the output, again JSON or XML or whatever that you will wish to get as the output. So at the end, so possible solutions you can do with DIS. So initially what we are making is like the framework to do all these operations. So on top of that, since we are given the flexibility to do any kind of data operations there, data orchestrations, so we can like basically do these type of, um, create these type of scenarios with that. So obviously uh, simple data service, crowd operations, as we have DSS, can be done with DIS. So, and also like other data warehousing related functions, so probably can implement with the uh, help of DIS plus DAS. So if you are doing like update driven approach, uh, we can use DIS to extract the uh, heterogeneous data sources, do some cleaning transformation and put all those data into probably a DAS, do some extended analytics, reporting and so on. So it's a possible uh, solutions we can, we can have. And also other scenarios like master data management, if you want to ma manage the master data. So uh, you can uh, uh, work with the master data, master list, and so on. Those kind of features can be built on top of uh, the DIS uh, functionality. So we are basically, as I mentioned, given the raw features and the, the most important one as the, as the first uh, basically product release. But you, uh, we give you the flexibility to create much more advanced scenarios using the product as well. So, <clears throat> actually, that's it.